Spark's Beam is the brains of the new integrated sharpening experience that you find with the Sharpener 3. It's easy to think of Beam as simply the Edge Checker 2.0, but it's not quite that simple. Some will find it exciting, some won't. And if you don't already own an Edge Checker, this video should help you choose. It's important to get one or the other to make sure you're making the most of your Sparks. Beam has a firmware update right out of the box to make sure you're on the latest version. So while we do that from the Sparks app, let me take a moment to thank Conway and Banks for sponsoring this Sparks mini series. If your hockey bag is a hurtin', watch my review of the Conway and Banks hockey bag and Louise Pond backpack. I've used them as long as I've used the Sharpener 3, they're working well, so watch that if you're in the market for a new bag and save 10% using my link and code below. All right, our firmware is now up to date. It is February 21st. I'm on version 1.0.7.0, so let's dig in. And if you're new here, my name's Yosh. We cover hockey tech on this channel. The standalone case is great, and this is the type of add-on I expect at the price of $249. It holds everything included securely, and I think you actually kind of need this case as there's no great place in the travel case for beam. You could skip the case and cram it in the front pouch, but I won't be risking that myself. Inside, we've got the wireless charging pad, some foam stuck along the charging port edge on this for alignment. So not necessarily a premium feel to this particular facet of the device. There's a protective divider here, and then a tiny microfiber, the metal blade thickness gauge, and a USB cable type A to micro C. Like I mentioned in my Sharpener 3 overview, I would have liked to have seen USB directly into the device itself. The blade thickness gauge helps you determine if your steel is less than 3.5 millimeter or greater than or equal to. And again, there are some helpful tool tips in the app for this as well. It's also used when calibrating beam, so you can find that in the settings. And for beam, we've got a precision cutout in the case, a very long thumb screw, and a removable tilt plate. Charging is relatively quick. Beam pulses red when charging and shines green when complete. It took a little over an hour after I fully ran it dead, and it's actually kind of hard to completely drain. It's one of those devices that will briefly and repeatedly power on over and over for shorter durations until it dies. In practice, having it die on you will likely never be an issue. I'd love for the app to show you battery percentage in the future though when paired. If you're keeping score at home so far, Beam is bulkier, more fragile, and needs a charge. So if you are primarily out and about with your sparks, there are some clear advantages to sticking with the edge checker. Now on the positive side, if you're wondering whether you can trust Beam, in my case, you absolutely can. I was a little skeptical at first. The readings I was getting when I started were zero or so close to zero that I was just naturally suspicious. Not to mention, there's no calibrating the Sharpener 3 with a special alignment ring and optical tool. So I was really wondering how this could be so good right out of the box. To cross-check my beam results, get it? I borrowed an edge checker from a nice young fellow at my local rink. But here's where it starts to get interesting, and an integrated sharpening experience doesn't seem to be a slam dunk across the board. The part where Sharpener 3 arrives factory calibrated, and it's bang on from the very start, that's epic. And I don't have a great sample size, N of one here. There's also another fine fellow at my local rink that took the Sharpener 3 plunge. Same results for him, dead on, right out of the box. If you are a completely new user, and sharpening is foreign to you to begin with. I want to double down here. All was good in the past once you were nice and set up, but eliminating this step from the start is a huge win moving forward. Now I've run about 10 sharpenings, and I'll tell you why I don't know the exact number in a second. So what I did to test beam was put the 5 8 inch radius of hollow grinding ring on my sharpener three. I knew that I would use that ring personally the least, so I was willing to you know grind some excess off of it. And I used the alignment driver to purposely throw my machine out of alignment because I really wasn't getting good real world testing when my edges were coming dead even out of the machine over and over and over. So in three instances, I turned clockwise, four turns at a time, four cycles each, until I got to 12 turns total. And I slowly but surely got to a yellow reading. And after a flick of the tilt bar, the beam read 0 0.0027 inches, less than three thousandths, less than a sheet of paper, only a few of the best players in the world can detect this. The edge checker hovered right at the edges of the green zone. Beam then recommended that I turn nine cycles back to the left and recommended five cycles for that sharpening. I reversed the full 12 turns instead and ran six cycles. I was back to green and 0 0.0003 inches and the edge checker looked dead on. So with the exception that the correction recommendation wouldn't have brought me all the way back to the factory reset, when using the app in tandem with Beam, getting this direct measurement I think is actually really cool. The problem that I see with this is that I would love to use Beam without connecting the app at all. And you can, you can actually do this already, but if you rely on the green and yellow LED lights without using the app, you're actually getting less information than when you were using the edge checker. What I mean by that is that without the app, the green indicator is going to be green, 
whether you're dead even, or if you're at the edge of that green zone, hovering just about to go to yellow. Let's tighten this on here. When you read beam, you always want the toe facing forward. And then I'm gonna give this tilt bar a flick and we're green. I skated on this set this morning. So, you know, we don't wanna take stock in this necessarily, but this is what I mean. This green could be dead even, or it could be pretty close to yellow. On the edge checker, you can see visually whether it's dead even or if it's approaching the edges of that green zone and bordering on what would be yellow with beam. So we've essentially turned what could be some continuum of error visually to your eye with the edge checker into a very binary green yellow when using beam without the app. When we zoom out, in the grand scheme, is this a problem? Probably not. We are still sharpening from the comfort of our home, which feels like the future, and green is supposed to represent what would be acceptable to virtually almost everybody. But if I'm being honest, when I had the edge checker, if the tilt bar was slanted to the point of almost escaping that zone, especially on more than one pair in a row, I would be adjusting and rerunning. I'm right at the sharpener. Why not fix this now? You know, why not get these runners closer to even? Why not get the machine set up to be closer to even generally? for the next time that I sit down and turn it on. So the big missing feature in my mind, hopefully a relatively simple app update. I would love a setting called something like increased accuracy threshold. When you go in and pop that setting, it would essentially have those current tolerances, those acceptable ranges for green and yellow. That way, once I have that setting turned on, when I hit green on beam without connecting to the app, I just know I'm a lot closer than you know knowing what I know now today. If I hit yellow, I can actually pull out the phone and check out the recommendation. But Yosh, why are you trying to ditch that phone so bad? Well, right now, as is, beam is a slower process than I had been used to when using the edge checker particularly when running through a batch of runners. Not dramatically, but it does add up. Beam goes to sleep, your phone goes to sleep. It's a little clunky. And after spending time with the app, the app doesn't seem to be as bulletproof as the accuracy of the Beam readings to me so far in my experience. It's better than beta, but still perhaps not quite ready for prime time. And I get updates pretty often. This app version is 1.0.33. So it looks like the team is cranking on it. They're squashing bugs, but software is hard. A few examples. Earlier when I said I didn't know exactly how many sharpenings I've run, well, when I sharpened all my runners in batch to continuously test beam, none of the beam recordings were recorded alongside in the sharpening log as they were when I first unboxed the machine and ran through a batch of runners previously. The latest batch of sharpenings also seems to be recorded in duplicate. And then I used four cycles for each of the sharpenings but a lot of them register as five cycles, which I know is just not true. And then this one's a bit harder to explain, but the user experience and UI in the app feels a little clunky as it's related to a sharpening workflow right now. It's not super smooth or super intuitive. If I look at the sharpening workflow, the app workflow needs to be robust enough to handle stepping off that ideal path. And it could be because of the phone locking and it just doesn't quite seem there. I know that's not super helpful, but that's how it feels. So while I trust the beam readings for accuracy in my case, I'm pretty solid on that. I don't quite trust the data from the app in quite the same way. One last tip, Sparks says just to use beam in the center of your runner. You can totally slide this to the heel or toe. There's no physical impediment to doing so, and it might help you identify a curved or warped runner. But I think their advice is good to measure from the middle because if you get a recommendation using the app, you really want that recommendation based on the center of the runner, which ideally is never really going to be warped or curved. That's going to be the straightest place and how you would have used the optical alignment tool in the past centered on the machine. So just don't align based on the heel or toe. So who's it for? Beam is backward compatible. So here's how I'd recommend each based on my usage of both. If you have Beam bundled with your Sharpener 3, skip the edge checker. Embrace the new tech. Unless Beam is really slowing you down or you really need a manual backup, embrace the new tech, save the money, you're good to go. If you have the original Sharpener and you're somehow without an edge checker or without Beam, I would go with the edge checker. That way, if you upgrade in the future, you don't end up with two beams. If you have the Sharpener 2, it's a little bit trickier. If you still don't have either, you could go either way, go cheaper or pay for the added convenience and accuracy that Beam provides. But if you have the Sharpener 2 and you already have an edge checker, then I think you can hold off on Beam unless you really want the accuracy, you want to play with the new tech, or if you know someone who's willing to take your edge checker off your hands, then you can roll that into your new Beam purchase. Thanks again to Conway and Bangs for sponsoring this video. I'll catch you over in the comments of my review of their hockey bag and Luis backpack.